Alright, we're going to solve some trig equations, but uh, they're not going to involve unit circle angles, so they are arguably a little more challenging, but not really. Um, so for example, we might have solve sine of x equals negative 0.58. Um, so what I do is basically the same as what I've done previously. I notice that it's sine and it's negative, um, so that means that it could come from quadrants 3 or 4. Um, but here's a different step. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the reference angle. So the reference angle is going to be the inverse sine of the absolute value of negative 0.58. All right, so that absolute value is going to be important because then I don't have to worry about, you know, the inverse sine of negative 0.58 is actually a quadrant 4 angle, and it's negative, and blah, blah, blah. Um, here what I have is the nice reference angle. It's quadrant 1 angle. I know what to do with that. Um, so let's do this. So quadrant 3, um, x is going to be equal to... Uh, so I'm in the third quadrant, so it's going to be pi plus the reference angle, so the inverse sine of 0.58, where I took the absolute value of negative 0.58. There's no point in really writing that over and over. Um, but then, of course, uh, we can wrap around, so that's plus 2 pi n. And uh, so I could be done there. Um, so let's move on to quadrant 4. So in quadrant 4, um, I know that the uh, way to get the angle, so x is going to be I'm going to say 2 pi minus the reference angle. So minus the reference angle, which is inverse sine of 0.58. And then we can wrap that around. Now, what might happen is uh, if you look back at what we have for quadrant 3, you can actually uh, factor that because we have a pi and we have a 2 pi n. Um, so the coefficient of pi in that case is actually 1 plus 2n. So let's rewrite this a little bit. So we'll have x is uh, the inverse sine of 0.58 and then plus... Um, so we have a, the coefficient of pi is 2n, and then a plus 1, and then that's all times pi, and then uh, n is an element of the integer still. And we can do something really similar for quadrant 4. Actually, we can make quadrant 4 a lot nicer. Um, we'll just have x is uh, the negative inverse sine of 0.58, and then if you look at it, we had uh, 2 pi and plus 2 pi n, but uh, if that's just one rotation uh, kind of spun out. So what I did was I just got rid of that 2 pi, right? Now if n equals 1, I'm back at 2 pi plus 2 pi n. Um, so not really a big deal. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, well, actually, I just want to highlight the, the key thing here is the reference angle. So the reference angle is the inverse sine of the absolute value of negative 0.58. And that's going to save you some trouble. So let's say we want to solve the secant of x over 2 plus pi is equal to 8. Uh, so this one's going to be worse only because of the algebra we have to do. Uh, but anyway, it's secant and it's positive, so that could come from quadrants 1 and 4 because cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. Um, our reference angle is going to be the inverse secant of uh, the absolute value of 8, which is really just the inverse secant of 8. But I always put in the absolute value because uh, it's actually easier to think about it all the time rather than try to think about it some of the time. Um, if you wanted to, you could also say the inverse cosine of 1 eighth but I don't want to, so I'm not going to. All right, and uh, now this is one of those scenarios where we have a, a thing in a box. So for quadrant one, the thing in the box could be equal to, um, in the first quadrant, the angle is actually just equal to the reference angle. So that's the inverse secant of eight, and then we can wrap it around. Uh, but now I have to solve. So I'm gonna subtract uh, pi from both sides, get uh, inverse secant of eight minus pi plus two pi n, n is an element of the integers. I'm going to multiply through by 2, and uh, I'll get to an answer that I, if I'm satisfied with it, I could stop there, um, but I notice that there are two pi terms, so I probably want to uh, factor that a bit, so 2 secant inverse of 8, and then plus, uh, let's see, we got the coefficient of pi now is uh, 4n minus 2, and then pi, and pi is an element, uh, n is an element of the integers. And then for quadrant four, I'm actually going to do something a little different here. I'm going to notice that I usually say 2 pi minus the reference angle, but 2 pi is one full rotation already. Um, so I'm actually just going to use the negative of the reference angle, which would be coterminal to 2 pi minus the reference angle. So I'm going to use a simpler coterminal angle because it makes everything a little easier. So I'm just going to go with negative secant inverse of 8, and then plus 2 pi n like that. Uh, I'm going to subtract pi from both sides, but I'm going to kind of think about it while I do it. So I get this. 
uh, when I subtract pi from both sides, the coefficient of pi on the right-hand side will now be 2n minus 1. So I'm actually going to go with 2n and then minus 1, and then that's the coefficient of pi. And obviously n is an element of the integers. And then I'll multiply through by 2 and write my answer like this. Um, but actually, if you look at it and think about it, secant is an even function. Um, and compare these two answers that I just got. Uh, both of them have essentially plus the quantity 4n minus 2 times pi um, as kind of what is the period, what's making uh, it loop around. And then it's really just plus or minus. So we really could have written this uh, in a sort of simplified fashion as plus or minus 2 inverse secant of 8 and then plus 4n minus 2 times pi where n is an element of the integers. So you could have done that, but you didn't have to. Um, so those are two examples. Just going to summarize some key points. First one is you're going to use this concept a lot, right, to determine what quadrants it could come from. The second thing is you're going to use a reference angle. And for the effort, uh, reference, that was a weird mistake. Uh, the reference angle, what you're going to do is the, uh, I'm going to say arc trig, so like inverse sine, inverse cosine, whatever. I call those arc trig when I want to generalize it of the absolute value of the ratio that you're given. So that gives you a nice reference angle. You don't have to worry about what quadrants you're dealing with or the ranges of the inverse function. So I recommend you do that. Um, and then the final thing you really need to worry about um, is uh, algebra, which is kind of the mortal enemy of every trig student. So those three things will allow you to solve these when they're not unit circle angles. Um, and I think you'll be successful. So good luck with that.